So, I, uh, being that I am Indian, I, I've, I've always kind of, I haven't hated Gandhi. He's not my favorite, though. A lot of Indian people love that dude, and arguably so. Like, he did fight for independence, right? And, and he is, he is, um sort of coined as the person that granted India its independence through civil disobedience, but it was actually very multi-layered. You know, I think humanity's problem is that we have, uh, we we exhibit a lot of black and white thinking, especially when it comes to historical events. Um, And this is historical events like 60, 70 years ago, you know. Something like that. And uh, that's not that long ago. And we still, like, exhibit this black or white thinking to be like, this person granted the freedom of a country. It's like, no, there were a lot of people fucking involved. There were a lot of people on the ground. There were a lot of different types of movements that contributed to it. Uh, you know, Nehru, the first prime minister of, uh, of India, had, had a lot to do with it as well. And I don't think Nehru is given as much credit as I think he deserves. Um, but... One of the things we forget when we kind of project um, this sort of, like, godhood to these people. Because he's called Mahatma, right? Like, Mahatma is sort of this uh, very prestigious title. Uh, And uh, we kind of forget that, uh, you know, these people are are human. Which means that they are flawed. And they fuck up. And they make mistakes. And sometimes don't realize what they're doing is a mistake is fucking terrible and uh and some people have a hard time reconciling with that uh i i remember finding out some stuff about gandhi when uh, i was a teenager you know um and uh and i was just like fuck really you know it's like when you find out that martin luther king jr cheated on his wife a bunch like and you're just like fuck really and, and it's like yeah but he still like stood for equality and championed for civil disobedience and, uh, you know, like, the rights of everybody despite the color of your skin. None of that goes away. It's just he liked to fuck a whole bunch. <laughs> like, that's just... That's a, that's, a thing that, that's a thing that he did. You know? Like, he, he was still probably murdered by the FBI, right? Like, that, that doesn't change at all. Uh, but these people are flawed. You know, all the candidates that we like are flawed. I'm a fan of Tulsi Gabbard, but I don't agree with her all the time. You know, I'm I'm sure she said some mean bitchy things in, in high school, and then re- and then the but the difference is this: it's like she she realized she probably I don't know. I'm make uh, this is a hypothetical situation here, but you know, it's like oh yeah, fucking I was kind of an asshole. I fucking did that. I have I have. Uh, I have, you know, grown and evolved, and some of my belief systems have changed. When I was, like, 12, I was super anti-gay, and then one of my friends, uh, came out of the closet, and I was like, wait, but gay people are evil, and, and, but this guy is my friend. What the fuck is happening right now? And then I talked to him, and he kind of explained stuff to me, and we had this, like, really beautiful conversation uh, and it's, and it changed my mind, you know, he didn't get mad at me or nothing, I was just confused, and it's like, I'm, I fight, I talk about, like, pro-gay stuff all the time, I talk about, like, I don't give a shit what you do in the bedroom, I don't care who you love, just, I'm, I'm just excited that you love somebody, that's fucking awesome, you know, that's, a, that, that, that's where belief systems evolve, even when I, when I was an adult, you know, I would have, uh, it, uh, probably up until my 20s, I, uh, I kind of just was just like, capitalism is the way to do it. There's no other system that could really do it. And then now I'm just like, I don't know, maybe if we fucking need a little socialism in there. You know, we got to throw a little socialism into our capitalism so our capitalism doesn't become just a, a fuck of a goddamn economic system that, that is eating itself fucking alive and doesn't realize it's eating itself alive, you know, like, like, but that was, like, early 20s, I fucking believe that shit, and then you do, and then you learn, and you uh, you figure yourself out, uh, you know, like, but sometimes, that's, that's some of the problems with Gandhi, is I 
there's some things that he did learn and kind of move forward from, but there's some things where I'm just like, yeah, it's kind of fucked up, right? So let's go through some of them. Let's go through some... And by the way, NPR uh, did a story about him, right? And uh, my friend Lee Camp and I have talked about Gandhi a couple times, and he'll, like, send me stuff about Gandhi that, like, hits American uh, American journalism and American media, and, uh, and uh, you know, he sent me this thing, and it's just like, oh, look at, look at NPR getting into big kid journalism, you know, talking about the flaws of some of the world's heroes, you know, like, let's, that's, that's cool, that's interesting, you're humanizing these people, so that we don't have to fucking get caught up in, in hero worship, and put, put a bunch of, like, social, economic, and, uh, political movements on the back of one person, and when that person doesn't do it, we fucking psychologically snap, break, and just go fucking ape shit about things, you know, go burn it down, like, it's, you know, because, we, because we it all hinged on one person, it's like, no, it's, it depends on all of us being a little better to each other, so, um, one of the major complaints about, uh, Mahatma Gandhi is that early in his career, he was racist, and he was, he was super fucking racist, he did not like black people, like, he was, so he went, he was, uh, I think he was, like, studying in South Africa or something, and, and this is, like, during apartheid still, um, and he basically was, like, yeah, uh, this country should just belong to white people, like, that's basically what he believed, it was just, like, South Africa should be for the, for the whites, you know, like, whites seem to be very civilized, uh, Indian people are, like, the second most civilized, like, he did, he, he fucking gave his own people second best, <laughs> like, what kind of fucking self-deprecating nationalism is that? Uh, you know, like, <laughs> like he's like, we're number two, you know, I like to be humble about us, but those Africans, they're just low, they're uncultured, and they're, uh, and they're dirty, and they're mean, and, and like, he just fucking went uh, down a list of things, and, and so now, because he fucking had that viewpoint, uh, there's a lot of Africans that still, you know, disavow him. They, they don't, they don't believe, uh, that, that he is a champion of, of people because, because in the beginning of it, he was so vehement about it. Now, over the course of his, uh, his activist career, he did change his mind. Um, he did realize that if we are going to champion for the rights of people, we need to champion for the rights of everybody. Uh, despite what skin color you are, despite what, uh, religion you are, right? So he kind of, um, he kind of put forward, uh, this, this idea. Um, and, uh, MLK Jr. did learn from him, right? He, he did take his philosophies that he did realize that civil disobedience and, uh, peaceful protest are, are the ways to go, are the ways that we, uh, have to take care of things, which is cool, that's awesome, you know, MLK probably took what he learned from, uh, from Gandhi, and, and took it to the next step, which is what we should be doing, right, like, when we learn about these philosophers, when we learn about historical, uh, figures, anecdotes, um, uh, thoughts, feelings, stuff like that, and, and, and it resonates with us, that's awesome, and what we should do is take that as step one, and step two is, well, what can I do with this? How can I take this to the next step? And that involves a lot of critical thinking, uh, which uh, which human beings have uh, are, are starting to become not good at. <laughs> like, we're just not becoming good at like introspection and critical thinking. We're just we're we're just like, nope. <laughs> this is it, <laughs> you know, like, it's fucking ridiculous to me that we're not, we're not doing that sort of stuff, um, but, you know, the interesting thing about that is, some people see this, this notion of, uh, civil disobedience, of nonviolent protests as weak, they don't see it as a, um, as a point of strength, as a point of resolve, as a point of understanding one another, right? I, I really do think that civil disobedience, diplomacy, um, uh, trying to be conversational, trying to be understanding of, of where fears and things like that come from, um, and trying to quell those fears through these, through these means, is really a way that we're going to, like, get beyond our own identities, right? Because identities, to me, are, um, 
Like when we play in identity politics, it, it, to me, it's all just ego driven. It's all it's all surface level shit. And and your identity is important, but primarily it's important to you, right? Like that's I'm excited about learning about my country in a in a different light uh, over the last you know year year and a half uh, that that I'm learning about the history of my country through the politics that's going on there and how it's connected to the politics of the country that I'm currently in. I'm excited about that, and I want to share it with people, but here's the deal, man, like, no one cares, no one has to care, it's cool that people do, trust me, but I'm mostly doing it because I care, and I give a shit, and it's important to me, and I hope that to some people it's also equally important, but it doesn't have to be, right, so to me it's just like, your identity is most important to yourself, let's look beyond that, and that's what I try to do, is like, I try to take, let's look beyond the identity, let's look at what the Hindu philosophies have to say, what I've learned and how we can apply that to everybody, to like the, on a, on a universal scale, right? Um, but people look at that, uh, you know, uh, civil disobedience as, as weak. And l- the reality is people like, um, people like M- uh, MLK need the opposite side, right? It has to work in conjunction with each other because in order for civil disobedience to have any weight, you need to know that there is somebody that is ready to fucking, uh, you know, go down the anarchist cookbook route, uh, and, and burn it all to the ground, right, so, as much as Malcolm X needs MLK, MLK needs Malcolm X, um, Mahatma Gandhi was, was needed, but we had people like Bhagat Singh, um, and, and the story of Bhagat Singh is very interesting, he was, he was a revolutionary in India, blew up the British embassy, got, put on a public trial, taught the people how to make a pipe bomb, because they were fucking putting it on the radio, and then they made sure that there wasn't going to be a public execution to martyr these people, right? Because they were, like, that scared of the movement, and, and that, that, that sort of stuff also strengthens the, uh, the, the civil disobedience nonviolent movement, and it also, and the civil disobedience, the, the counter to that is important, that they have to strike a balance, they need each other, right? It's, it's two sides uh, uh, of the same revolutionary coin. It's two sides of the same revolutionary coin. So, one of the major controversies right now is uh, surrounding the the Hindutva, uh, because that's who Gandhi was assassinated by. Uh, He was assassinated by someone that believes in the philosophies of Hindutva, which is a very, like, um, pro-hyper-Hindu philosophy that does exist in India. Um... Uh, there are uh, a lot of members of the ruling party, the BJP, that believe in this philosophy of Hindutva, that uh, y- if you're in India, you have to be a Hindu kind of thing. Um, and uh, and Godse, um, who is Gandhi's assassin, was a member of the Hindutva, but believed that it was only meant to be a country for Hindus, by Hindus, and if you weren't going to be a Hindu, then, uh, then fuck you. Right, and and what Gandhi was preaching by by, uh, you know the the independence of the country, uh, and I mean this is also part of the constitution in India, by the way, is secularism. Basically, saying that you have the freedom to to believe and practice whatever philosophy and religion that you want, whatever way of life that you choose, as long as that way of life doesn't infringe on the rights of other people and doesn't hurt other people. Um, so basically, he was saying, like, yeah, if you're in India, you can totally be a Muslim. That's cool. Um, and uh, uh, that that has become a growing problem, right? It's in, because this is interesting to me because I feel like this growing problem in India right now uh, is a pri- is a kind of like a primarily direct result of of the way the country got its own independence. It got its independence by, you know, its hero getting assassinated by someone that believes that there is only one religion that should be allowed in the country, right? This sort of authoritarian um, religious and spiritual belief, which goes against a lot of the shit that Hindus believe in, by the way. Like, Hindu Hinduism, the, the philosophy and the way of life of Hinduism is like, you, you just don't tell other people how to live their life. Uh, you try to find your own peace. You try to find your own balance. You try to find your own... Um, 
you know, what works for you might not work for other people, but what works for other people, you can encourage them to do do more so that we can all live sort of this peaceful coexistence with each other. It, you know, and, it, and it's like to say that that's, Hinduism is the only way to do that is, I don't know, that doesn't work. It doesn't, it, that's not being Hindu. That's being a fucking authoritarian. And we still have that sort of philosophy today. And there are members of the BJP that are against this notion of secularism so much that they praise this dude. God say. Like, they praise him. So one of the people that... Um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember the details. I did a, I did a, a, a breakdown of this a few months ago... Uh, maybe it's maybe it's worth uh, reposting some of this stuff. Um, but uh, I did a piece where where Modi, one of the people that he like, this woman got put into prison and she got out, and then he was like, I want her in, you know, like he he and the head of the BJP um, put this woman in charge of a, of a, a part of the government, right? They wanted her to either be in the Lok Sabha, the lower house, or something like that. Um, I'm, I'm probably misremembering some of the details here, uh, and uh, and if you know the exact story, yo, comment below uh, because I'm not remembering it properly, um, and uh, and I'm also very tired. But um, this woman came out and like started praising Godse, saying that he's like an Indian hero, you know, because she's championing Hinduism, being the only co- the religion, and it's like, yo, bro. Your fucking constitution of your country has freedom of religion and is a secular nation. How are you going against the constitution of your own fucking country? Not that people in America don't go against their own constitution. People do that shit all the fucking time. Uh, but it's like, it, like you can, and then it, and then <laughs> it got such a public outcry that she was like, "We got a fucking." have a national holiday for God's say for this murderer <laughs> we gotta do what America does and like celebrate these genocidal and homicidal maniacs <laughs> because yay the kings of capitalism <laughs> we gotta do all the shit that they do <laughs> right <laughs> it says, and the whole country was like what the fuck are you talking about lady and the BJP was like ah uh, we kind of made a mistake. I we like we didn't think that she was gonna go that crazy on us. Like we didn't think that that was a thing that she was gonna say. And uh, and I think they like didn't give her the job or something. But it was just like, oh man, y'all need to do a little bit more research on who you're gonna put into your government. You know, like just a little bit more to be like, hey. Uh, do you got? Do you think that the uh, assassin of the hero of our country is like super cool, and we should take a like a day off to like celebrate this person, or or maybe maybe you think that that guy was not awesome and very misguided in uh, the understanding of this way of life that we are trying to uh, you know that that we believe in. You think he missed the point? No? Fuck. <laughs> well, just don't say it in public because Twitter exists. <laughs> like... It's a problem in India right now. I, I will I will say it's not it's not my favorite aspect of the BJP. A lot of things that they're doing um, is is uh, not positive, uh, and it's coming out of this this uh, s- strange belief of the Hindutva, this strange belief of like hyper Hindu nationalism, um, and I just I don't care for it, right? Like India's India's just like America; it's a fucking melting pot. We were one of the countries that gave Jews a place to come and live and 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 uh, uh, work and, and just be fucking. Jewish, right? Like, you could just be a practicing Jew. Nobody cares. Uh, I remember I remember reading this thing at, when I was uh, popping around D.C. I, I had, uh, uh, this was like the one point in my life that I had some time off. Uh, and uh, I remember going into, I think it was like the Jewish History Museum or something like that in, in 
Washington, D.C. And I saw that, and I was like, hey, way to go, India. Fuck yeah. And uh, they were like, the Jews did have a nickname. And I was like, oh, no. Uh, and it basically, it was, it was this Hindi word. It was this Hindi word that directly translated to those that won't work on Saturdays. <laughs> They were just like, hey, they recognize the Sabbath and they're not going to come in on Saturday. Who wants their shift? <laughs> and I thought that was so funny. It's just so funny. It's just like, hey, they're not going to work on Saturdays because they got a God thing to do. Anybody want to take their shift? Because we're not going to tell them that they can't do the God thing. Because we're going to do a bunch of God shit. <laughs> like, that's what they're thinking for. It's just like, that's what this country is. It's a melting pot of all these different philosophies, you know? And and we're going to fucking say that it's, it's just it's one way. Like, what a fucking... Stop throwing your temper tantrum about your philosophy that's supposed to preach, like, love and acceptance and inclusivity. Like, but it's only got to be done this one way. Like, fuck you. <laughs> like, it's not going to work. This is a fucked up thing that Gandhi did, though. He was obsessed with his own celibacy. Um, so there were, uh, there's a bunch of stories, a bunch of articles that I remember reading, like uh, a little while, of, like years ago, one or two years ago, where uh, he would like practice practice tantric sex or like practice these like tantric um, sexual techniques or something like that, at, just because like he was so dedicated to his own celibacy, being this point of civil disobedience or something. Um, and one of the things that he would do to, like, test his willpower is he would, like, lay in bed naked with young girls, like, teenage girls, just to be like, can I not fuck them? Like, yeah, don't fuck teenage girls as a full-grown adult, maybe. Like, that should just be a... You shouldn't need to test it. Just don't do it. <laughs> like... You don't have to do it. I'm I'm 30 and like I don't need to test my willpower by but like I do shows at college campuses and every time that I do I'm just like I got to do my show and get out of here because I'm just not comfortable being around the fashion that's around, you know, like some of these girls like the clothes that they're wearing, I'm just like what happened to the bottom half of your shirt? Did someone steal it? Has someone taken the bottom part of your shirt? Should we report it to the authorities? Are you okay? Should I call somebody? Do you want the bottom half of my shirt? And we can just like tape it to the bottom part of your shirt. What is happening? You know, like, I don't feel, I'm 30. I don't need this fucking test of celibacy. Like I know that I don't want anything to do with, it's crazy. It's crazy that he needed to, like, test his celibacy that way. What the fuck? I think he did it with, like, his grandniece or granddaughter or some shit like that. It's just like, what? Oh, man, that's crazy. You should not do that. That's crazy fucked up. You know? But he still, I got it, you know, that's fucked up. But he did believe in civil disobedience and preach nonviolence uh, as a way of uh, protesting. So, um... One of the things people do think, though, regardless of all of this, is that Gandhian philosophies are going to be championed forever. Uh, and, I, and I do believe that, right? I don't think Gandhi is, like, the inventor of civil disobedience. I don't think Gandhi is, like, the guy for civil disobedience. I think he's one of the people for civil disobedience, right? There are several uh, other people that have preached nonviolence. Um, uh, MLK, Nelson Mandela, there, you, you have people like Bernie Sanders today, Tulsi Gabbard, you know, um, that... that uh, believe in diplomacy, nonviolence, civil disobedience, that sort of stuff. Um, and um, I think those philosophies are going to keep moving forward. But we, you know, and, and that's the thing is like we need to work in tandem with the people uh, like Malcolm X, uh, like Bhagat Singh, you know. Uh, we need to work in tandem to be like, okay, when shit pops off, um, I don't know how to fight, but there's a bunch of guys that do, you know. And we need the diplomats, right? To me, like, Nehru is, is, a, is a bigger hero than he's given credit for. Uh, he was the first prime minister of India, and he was sort of the diplomat, right? He was, 
he was sort of the guy that talked to the British and was just like, hey, you guys got to get the fuck out of here. Uh, because, a lot, look, it's either going to come down to bloodshed and violence um, or we're going to continue doing this peaceful protest shit. But at some point, you're going to get overwhelmed by all this. So why don't you just fucking leave? Uh, and we're going to figure out what to do with our, our own democracy. And we don't need you fucking it up for us. Um, and that's great. We need all that shit. It's important. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections, where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road.